change an existing person, you were accused of undermining the Nigerian state. The state, the individual became the state. So most of that is what is still playing out today. And that is why I'm concerned. And I think that more and more people with a serious intellectual pedigree must also begin to dispose themselves favorably towards participating in the life of the National Assembly. It's only then that you can now begin to address those kind of critical questions. That is, what is blocking the water from reaching the people? Because obviously something is wrong. And that we have these structures that were undemocratic, which have been imported into the democratic space, which are stopping the flow of capital. And that is why now you see, I mean, we're, I mean, we're talking about fighting corruption. Mm. And you're talking about over $400 billion that has escaped what creates this kind of a system? But before we talk about fighting corruption, let's also talk about another matter which has occupied the public space and raised a lot of concern, which is the clashes between farmers and herdsmen. Only recently, I think about a couple of days ago, we had the, the vice president, <coughs> excuse me, was convening a meeting uh, with uh, some elders from the northern region and will hold uh, even more meetings with other groups in the north to try and find a lasting solution uh, to the farmer herders conflict. In your mind, how to your mind how would you say that this conflict has been handled so far are you happy with the way uh, that the government not just the federal government now but even state governments are handling it when Boko Haram started barely six months into the engagement I wrote an article titled uh, bread not bombs and my argument and the former president Jonathan I know my view I argued that, and it had to do with national security advisors and so on. And my argument was, look, the office of a national security advisor is not necessarily a military office. It's the brain box of the nation. And that it has to develop the capacity, an anticipatory capacity, to monitor likely developments everywhere. So it constantly abreast with money. It's rather is active in terms of if the rains don't fall, what is likely to happen? Because security issues in Nigeria simply mean more guns, sophisticated guns, and so on and so forth. And I argue that, look, Boko Haram forces us, should force us to develop an intellectual capacity to ask ourselves, where did this come from? What way are we looking? What way are we thinking? When September 11 happened, first question Americans ask themselves. There's an article published by, um, what's his name? who does um, GPS, um, Farid, Zakarias. Farid Zakarias. He published an article. You can Google it. The title of the article is, Why Do They Hate Us? Because Americans were obsessed with the fact that we're doing good for the whole world. Why would anybody want to kill us? But they forgot. Somebody wanted to kill the Pope. Can't get better than that. So, but then they tried to then answer the question. You need to understand what is driving this hatred. Nigerians have still not addressed the question of, what produced Boko Haram? It's not enough to talk about Yusuf. Mm. It is that there is a chain, and I've argued in a paper, that you have to go back the last 100 years. So the point I'm making is that mm -hmm. it is not enough to say, you know, uh, we are going to end the war against Boko Haram. It is that we need to add an intellectual texture to this conversation. Do you see a and link between Boko Haram and the crisis between farmers and herdsmen? Okay, the same way, you know, the late Delegiwa used to say that journalism is history written in a hurry. We're taking all our stories from the, from the newspapers. And the newspapers, you read them in a hurry. 